this is going to be quite a serious video and one that I'm doing in between my review videos. Um, it's not a topic I talk a lot about just because there are people out there who have had really nasty things to say about me in the past and they twist and turn anything that I do into something really dirty and disgusting and I just, I honestly, I just don't want to hear it, I have to deal with it. Um, so I keep it to myself. But I came across a post on Facebook today that actually made me bawl my eyes out. I was reading it to Josh and I just started blubbering like a baby. And it got me thinking and I thought this would be a good topic for a video. Um, just because it's something I've thought about here and there but not something I've ever like really voiced. Um, and that is, it has to do with pets. This is my baby girl right here. This is the topic of this video here. This is Amara. Amara. Oh, oh you're so pretty. Oh, look, she's just going to cuddle up. This is the one that's got the two different colored eyes. She's got a blue eye and she's got a, she's got a blue eye and she's got a yellow eye. You can sit down. I'm sorry. Here you go. Um, <clears throat> so Josh and I have taken in a lot of animals that are about to be thrown out on the streets. People that are like, um, I'm moving or I can't have my cat, um, if, if someone doesn't take it, I'm going to take it to the pound. I'm just going to throw them outside. And it makes me think back to Marmalade and the ki the kitty cat I had when I moved in here. Um, we were getting our floors fixed and somebody left the door open and she got out, went next door and the next door neighbor's dogs killed her. I mean, I looked everywhere. I called um, the vets in the area. I called vets that were hours away just in case she was found somewhere else and they took her, you know, outside of this area. Uh, I did everything I could to find her and then the neighbors called and said, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, she was under a tree and that was devastating. That's two cats that I, I love to death dead, you know, from being outside and I want to do what I can. If I've got the space and the ability, I want to be able to take in, you know, an animal and give it a home until I can find it a better home. Some of these animals I end up keeping, but most of them, most of them are to be passed on because that's not why I, I got them, you know. She was a pet, though. She was my baby. Ooh. Um, so we got Lucifer. Lucifer was the first one, and we still have him. He's over here licking himself. <laughs> um, he was he was tiny. He was a tiny little boy, a tiny little baby. Now he's a big old floof ball. Um, he's a sweet boy, though. He's showing a little bit of attitude as he's getting older. He's about two maybe two and a half years old now, something like that. But he's grown up to, grown up into like a really big, really pretty boy. We have a couple of cats here left. At one point we actually had, I'm not even gonna tell you the number, but we had way too many because we took in two girls and um, this was when COVID first started. And we said, um, we cannot have any uncut females here because all of our, except for her, all of our um, animals are spayed or neutered. And um, I said, we cannot take in any uncut females because we've got two boys here and they haven't been able to get an appointment to get cut yet because of COVID. Said, no, 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 they're spayed. They're spayed. Don't worry about it. They weren't spayed. And they ended up having, um, they both, uh, sorry, they both had a litter of kittens. And then I saw the boys when, when I think the babies were like two months old saw the boys sniffing around the girls again and I was like man and I posted everyone please can somebody help uh, I need to get these boys neutered or rehomed or something because I cannot we cannot have more litters we just rehomed those ones and the girls started showing pregnant again nobody wanted the boys so we ended up putting them outside which is exactly what I didn't want to have to do and that that sucked so much we sleep in the living room we've got one bedroom and um, it's chock full of stuff here. This place is, I'm not even going to get into this place, but there's just no way to separate them. We're, we're not able to separate them. So the only thing we could have done was throw the boys outside, which we put them in the back. Finally got them appointment, got them both neutered, got them both rehomed, got the girls spayed, the girls both rehomed. And we ended up all together with four litters of kittens. And that was a nightmare to get rid of um, just because it was kitten season and so everybody had kittens nobody wanted kittens now there might be another one or two that we might rehome i'm not entirely sure yet they're ones that um we weren't supposed to keep anyway and then there's that stray that's decided to wander in and he 
move the camera over to him. So there's our black and white boy. And there's that one. The big thing right there. That's the boy that has decided he lives here now. And I'm pretty sure it's her daddy. Because they've got the same coat. And um, they look almost exactly the same. So I'm pretty sure that's her daddy over there. So yeah, but anyway, uh, not to get off topic or anything, that completely got off topic because I'm not here to talk about our animals or who we have or what we're doing. I'm here to talk about the pain of losing an animal and not in the way that you think. Um, well, maybe the way you think, I'm not even sure. Anywho, I don't even know how to get into this video, which is why I'm blubbering, but I saw a post today. I'm going to read it to you guys and I warn you I might start crying because it's really sad. Um, this is about a woman and sh her cat of uh, like 16 years. Yeah, 16 years. I already feel myself tearing up. My cat, her cat of 16 years just died, I guess, of old age. And, um, you know, for all, all the people that think that I abuse animals or I kill them, the people that have actually come here to my house, they will tell you that is so far from the truth. Um, our cats are so loved and so tame and so happy and so spoiled. It's like the furthest thing from the truth, the rumors that are out there about me. And it's it's like past the point of ridiculousness. You know, my cats are my babies and um, I love them to death, especially this one here. And this is this this little girl has worked her way into my heart. And I'll talk more about her after I get this post out of the way because I feel myself tearing up already. Um, I love Lucifer. I love, I love all the cats that we have. I love everybody, but it's like, it's a lie if people try to say you don't have a favorite. I do have a favorite and it's her and I'll tell you why. She's perched on my knee right now. I don't know if you can, she's just sitting on my knee. This is what she does. Um, out of every cat I've ever owned in my entire life, she is my number one favorite and thinking about the day that I might lose her. I know she's young, so it's far in the future, but that is going to break me to like the point of no return. I don't even want to think about that day. And, um, it just, this post here made me think like, oh my God, let me get into it first. Okay. So <clears throat> pardon me ahead of time. <laughs> All right. She says, um, you left me on Friday, but I still expect to see you at every turn. I still expect to see you waiting for me outside the bedroom door each morning, but you're not there. Tonight I washed your dishes for the last time. I threw away your litter and my heart went with it. Um, how does a litter box rip the heart out of my chest? It was yours and you're gone. For 16 years I cleaned up after you. I cleaned your litter box. I cleaned your fur off my clothes and furniture. I cleaned up the paper that I forgot to put up out of your reach when you ate it and regurgitated it all over the floor. Or better yet, my desk. I protected you from dad when you ate his $3,000 check and I was pretty sure he was about to punt you straight to heaven. I took you to the doctor when you ate tape. It got stuck in your throat and you couldn't eat. Twice. I cleaned up the trinkets that you threw all over the floor to prove to me that nothing was out of your reach and everything I owned was your toy. You protected me from socks in the night, dragging them out of the hamper and murdering them. You announced your kill, a fierce battle cry at 2 a.m., and left them all over the hallway as a warning to the other socks. You were an everyday adventure. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> Um, God, I'm such a pussy. And I held you every day for 16 years. You found your way into my lap, onto my shoulder, between my feet when I walked, and made your home right here in my heart. I'm sure no one has ever loved me as much as you did, and for all 16 years, I loved you too, from your first breath to your last. You were born in my hands. I helped your mother bring you into the world. She was so tired. Just a little tug here, a massage there. And you came meowing into this life. We had 16 years together. And I had the honor of seeing you off when you left me. You took your first breath in my hands. And you breathed your last in my arms. You were so very tired. I took all the pain from your tiny body and placed it in my heart as you slipped away. I tried everything to make you better, but you were ready. It's okay. You can go now. I'll keep you right here in my heart until I hold you again. Goodbye, my squishy. I pray that... Heaven is full of socks and sunshine and that you'll be waiting for me when I get there. I love you with every piece of my broken heart. So, I've been through, I've been through animal losses before. You know, marmalade, 
and my my little split face kitty here and it's never easy and those cats were pretty young they were they were way too young to have died you know um and it just makes me so scared to think about the day that something you know hopefully only old age because these cats are not going outside they i'll be damned if they even know what the outdoors is um I, I protect these doors like they are not an, allowed anywhere near the doors um, windows are closed everything I'm not gonna risk anything with these cats um, and I you know I get scared like I get scared if something would happen to Dorian I get scared if something would happen to Josh you know it's not just like oh my animals mean more than everybody it's not that it's just um you know they become like your children like your family and and they mean so much and like um, somebody's over there crying I think that's Holly. Um, and you do have your favorites, you know, there, there are animals that you, you do care about more than the others. I'm sorry, I'm going to tidy up really quick. Um, and whether people try to say that's, that's not true and you love everybody equally. No, I don't believe that for a second. And I didn't, you know, Lucifer was my favorite for a while, but even he wasn't like this little girl here. This little girl has she wasn't born here but she has definitely touched my heart and um her story <laughs> is uh i wasn't we shouldn't have had more animals because this is this is in the midst of um kitten get in here you know when we had all those kittens we had it was uh before um the the second litters of each happened when the first ones were still weaning and, you know, I thought, you know, okay, well, we're going to be rehoming them. Not really a big deal. Uh, we'll be able to because they're kittens, yada, yada, you know, I hadn't run into the troubles of rehoming or the troubles of a second litter yet. Um, I was just browsing on, on Facebook and I saw in one of the pet groups that I'm in, somebody had posted that they had kittens and they were all white. And I was like, those will be long gone, you know, white kittens, blue eyes, everybody wants white kittens, and I showed Josh, I was like, yeah, look at those, I mean, not, we don't need any more cats, but look at, look how pretty those kittens are, and he was like, oh yeah, those are super pretty, but yeah, no, we don't need any more kittens, um, but then again, those are white kittens, and they're so, they're so unique and so beautiful, um, maybe you should see if, if he has any left, and I was like, he probably won't, but, you know, I'll check it out, and I wrote the guy, and I was like, do you happen to have any kittens left? And he said he did. And I was like, how in the world do you still have kittens left? I mean, they're these beautiful, like, white kittens with beautiful blue eyes. And he said, I don't know. Nobody's shown up. Everybody's, like, left me, you know, left me hanging and stuff. And um, look at this. And so I told her, I told him, well, you know, who do you have left? He said he, he had, like, um, I think, like, two boys and a girl. And I was like, I'll, I'll take the girl. And I was telling Josh, and we had to drive about an hour or so, and I was like, you know, we're probably going to go over there, and um, we might not even have the girl. We might just take one of the boys, because I don't know, she might be a little attitude because, you know, the boy cats are nicer. They're supposed to be nicer than the girl cats, and I was like, she might not even be sweet. Maybe we won't even pick her. We'll, we might pick another one. And we got there, we didn't even have the choice, because he just brought out the girl to us, and I was like, yeah, she's so cute and little anyway, I'll just take her. And I was like, well, how old is she? And, you know, because I thought at least eight weeks old, right? And she, he was like, well, she's almost seven weeks, I think he said. But I think realistically she was maybe almost six because she was, she was small. She was so tiny. But I know how to take care of, you know, young animals. And so I got like kitten replacement milk and, you know, made sure that she stayed hydrated and she ate. And, you know, I, I kept an eye on her, made sure she was safe. And, um... In the car on the way home, um, she was crying nonstop. I was like, oh my God, she's so loud. You know, how do we get her to stop screaming and crying? Literally, all she wanted was to be touched. I opened the cage and I stuck my hand in and she didn't even try to leave the cage. She just like, oh, hey. And she just stretched her little paws. I, like, I've got a couple of pictures I'll put in here.
that she just stretched her little paws out and she was so happy just to lay there and be patted until she fell asleep hanging out of the cage because all she wanted was affection you know it wasn't even getting out of the cage she just wanted love and I thought that was the sweetest damn thing and I looked at her and I was like one of her eyes is a darker blue than another I wonder if she's gonna end up having two different colored eyes and I kept an eye on her and slowly her eye changed you know it went from like a blue to like a different shade of blue to a weird brown color and then you know finally she's probably about six months old now it's just completely pure yellow and blue you know one and one and I I like I've always seen those cats with two different colored eyes and I thought they were so pretty and um I never thought that I would have one I never actively searched for one holy crap my eyes are still leaking um sorry I I never actively looked for one because I figured there's no way I'll ever find one and one just fell into my lap and we never like we do this thing with the pets where um you know i mean we all live in this household the pets belong to all you know both of us and uh there'll be a certain you know certain pets that i i'm like well that one's mine and that one's yours but really you know it's just it's just a name it's not actually like this is mine and that's his um, they're just the ones that are our favorites and we kind of go out of our way to overly spoil if that makes sense. Like Lucifer's mine. He was always mine. Um, we had gotten Nightshade. Nightshade was, um, supposed to be my birthday present and she fell in love with Josh. So she became Josh's. I'm not even going to try. I cannot, I can't. <laughs> um, and, uh, the rest are just kind of like, whatever, you can have that one. I'll have that one. It's not really a big deal. But as you know, cats go to who they want to go to. You know, they choose they choose who they love and who who their owner is. We think we choose them, but really they choose us. And this little girl, Amara, she has been by my side since that day. Every day she goes out of her way. She comes and sits on me. She sits with me. I can I can rub her belly. I can kiss her all over her face. I can pick out her eye boogers, clip her claws. Um you know, I flea treat them, but sometimes they're still stragglers. And with her being short haired and white, you can see them. They like to hide right here on her. So um, I'll sit there with her on my lap and I'll get a pair of tweezers and I'll just squeeze them and pop them and then, you know, pull the fleas out. And she said she lets me do whatever I want with her. Like she does not fight me. She doesn't care. She just she loves um, when I first started working, I was back there in that room doing my training and stuff and she would scream and scream and claw out the door and I'd open the door and all she'd do is just hop on my lap. She just always wanted to be with me on my lap. Um, she comes up and she bites me on the face. Like she gives me love bites on my face and my hands all the time. And, um, I've started putting her, you know, in the room with the other ones sometimes when they're too hyper and I'm trying to sleep because the bedroom is, is the cat's room. And, um, she will... Like, she'll be fine in there, but when she hears my voice and she knows I'm awake, she will scream and scream and cry and claw at the door until she can come out and come say hi to me. She always meows, like, in the morning, first thing, because normally she stays out and everybody else, like, we divide them up, you know. The really hyper ones go in the room so they can just play, and then the older ones, the ones that sleep, stay out here. And, um, she's always been really good, so she's always, you know, stayed out here, and... When she would hear my alarm go off in the morning for work, she would always meow and come running over to, to greet me every morning. Like she's like a little puppy. She comes over to greet me. She comes running when I call, but she's just like, she'll bury under the blankets and then come lay against my body. Like she just, she is the sweetest, sweetest cat I have ever had, ever seen. She is always around me, always with me. And, um, I just, I love her so much and yeah, that's her story. <laughs> um, thinking about that post though I'm just seeing that unexpectedly that was that was across my feed <clears throat> I was like you know I could I could imagine what that'll be like with all the rest of these you know whoever we have left um the day that comes that they're old enough that they die and I I don't understand or agree with people that put their pets to sleep just because they're old because it's like, would you put your grandma down because she's old? You know, I mean, you, you let humans live out their lives, right? For the most part. Um, I just don't feel like it's right to take their lives away just because they're old. I mean, if they're in a lot of pain and uh, they just, they're suffering, 
that's one thing but just because they're old and their quality of life isn't exactly what it used to be so let them live out their life with you don't kill them i mean i i just don't see that i don't agree with that and i wouldn't unless my hand was forced i would not put any of my pets to sleep and um I first started having these thoughts with Lucifer. I was like, you know, it's going to suck, you know, when he gets, because he's the oldest one here. Oh, well, actually, that big old boy back there, he's five. But he's, you know, he didn't grow up here. He's a stray that, you know, decides he lives here now. But we don't have any, like, attachment to him like that yet. Um, but Lucifer, you know, he was the first one, the oldest one here. And when he gets older, that's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard to go through. It's going to be hard with everybody. And then when it comes her time, that's going to just crush me and break me. Like, I, I'm so protective of her. I'll, I don't know what I would do if anything happened to her. Like, she is she is my baby. She is my everything. And it just really sucks, you know, whether it's human or animal, to love something or someone and then lose them. You know, I've lost my mom. I've lost my dad. I've lost the pets that I love the most. And... It never gets any easier it never you're never prepared for it and I think about the pets that I've lost you know um, those two kitty cats I, I think about them quite often um, but this one here I'm just I'm just so determined to give her the best life I can she is so spoiled she's my little princess I just I I don't know I guess this is just like a kind of like a vent kind of voicing my fears kind of thing I just, um, I know I shouldn't put myself through that by thinking about it. You know, enjoy the time you have with her. Don't think about anything so serious and, you know, such a downer as she's going to die one day. That's so morbid, you know, but I just, if I had thought about that with my dad <clears throat> or my mom, then I probably would have <clears throat> made the time I had with them count more. You know, if you realize and understand and acknowledge the fact that death happens and you do think about it, then you could better, like, you could act better. Um, you could manage the way that you are with the, those that matter better. Does that make sense? Like, if you, if you acknowledge the fact that you could lose those closest to you, then it should affect the way you treat them and how much you appreciate your time with them while they're here. Whereas if it's not something you ever think about, like me, when my dad died, you know, I, I never ever imagined I would lose him. You know, I just thought that's my dad. He's always going to be here. You know, my adoptive father, but you know, he's always going to be here. Um, you don't really cherish or care. Uh, care is the wrong word. You don't, you're not careful with the time you have with them because you take it for granted that they're always going to be there. And, um since I'm hyper aware of death, <laughs> I think about it all the time, my own death and other people's and my animals. Um, it just makes me really aware of like how much I need to appreciate them and care about them while they're here. Because when that day comes, it's going to be so freaking hard. Like that's why I'm on Josh all the time. Stop smoking, stop smoking. I don't want to go through him having cancer and then having to watch my husband die. You know, like I watched my mom I didn't watch my mom die, but how my mom died, having to watch my dad die. I don't want, you know, Dorian to get depressed one day because he's still hurting over what happened to him. I, I don't want him to get depressed one day and commit suicide, you know. Um, I don't want my animals to grow old and die or get hit by a car or killed by another animal, you know. Lucifer, come here. You want to say hi? Lucifer. This is big old Lucifer. Look at how big he is now. Oh, I know. Look at you, big boy. Hey, he's the biggest little, he's the biggest boy. He's the big boy now. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Um, I know, I'm sorry. I had to fix my camera. Um, I don't want to lose anybody, and it's just, it's really hard to think about. So, I guess, do you guys ever think, like, if you have pets, do you ever think about losing your pets and how hard it's going to be one day when... Oh, she just licked me when they're old and they might get sick or, you know, I don't know. Or am I just morbid and wrong? I don't know. I guess that post just made me more aware than I was already aware of 
how hard it's going to be when that day comes. And that's just got me whole thinking. And when I get a thought in my head too much, I have to let it out or else it's just going to eat away at me. And, um, I'm just, yeah, I just, I don't know. It's depressing and it's sad and it's scary. And you know, it's almost to me, it's almost not worth loving anything at all to have to go through pain like that. That's going to just suck so hard. And I don't even know how I'm going to cope with that. And I know she's got a long, she's got a long life ahead of her. I mean, she's only like six months old, even old boy here, you know, he's got a long life ahead of him too. Cause he's only like two, aren't you? You got mommy's lipstick all over you, but, um, it's going to happen one day. It's nature. It happens. And, um, I just don't know what I'm going to do. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I guess, um, am I just being stupid? I probably am, but just let me know. I'm not the only one that thinks this, I guess. And what'd you guys think about her post? Was that like the saddest thing you've ever heard? Honestly, that is super, super sad. I feel so bad for her. I'm like, oh my God, I feel so bad for her. It's like losing a child almost. You little noisy, noisy thing. He's a big old boy now. Okay. This is from crying. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go because I need to do something about this. I will see you guys around next video. Now you see why I don't talk about personal stuff. I can't even keep my shit together.